encouraged. Amen. You may desire, amen, to try and devour her. But the devil is alive. I said the devil is alive. He's a good liar, but he's a liar just the same. Oh, he's a low like the good liar. But he's a liar just the same. He's a liar just the same. Amen. I said this morning, and I'm, I'm going to continue to say it, amen. I said this morning, mother, amen, amen. I'm kept by the power of God. Amen, amen. He kept me to keep me. He kept me to keep me. Amen. He didn't keep me to drop me, but he kept me to keep me. God that's kept me is the yes. God that's keeping me. Yes. And I give him praise. Yes. I give him yes. and I give him glory and I give him glory. Yes. 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 So what are you guys saying? Thank you, Jesus. Just, 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 just let the person next to you and tell them, don't I look kept? Don't I look kept? She said, well, you were kept. <laughs> you were kept. Yeah, just look at somebody and tell them, you were kept. Get your head up. Get your head up. You a piece. I said, Get your head up. You a piece. And I said, All right. <laughs> that little fella started walking in the house. I'm a piece. I'm a piece. <laughs> yes, he did. God is my witness. He did. Amen. I reminded him at Christmas time. Amen. The other day. Amen. Boy, you a there's a Pierce here. I got back up today. God bless you. So good. And then uh, Dr. Gina, so good to have you here. Dr. Gina Rawson. Amen. From Kansas City. Amen. Amen. She, she, uh, amen. she keeps up with us. Amen. I know. They may be watching. I don't want nobody to. Amen. Tell Bishop Houston. Amen. <laughs> She's a, uh, amen, she's one of our streaming members and uh, uh, just a love of the Church of God in Christ amen. and she supports so many people amen. across the country and uh, just so honored that she's here and the uh, individual that came with us, God bless you, we're so happy to have you. Come on, let's praise God. <laughs> amen. And Lady Coleman, amen, Lady Angela Coleman, who's here with us today. To have you, to have you here, they passed the Word of Faith uh, International Worship Center, Church of God in Christ. Amen. Just across the line in Delaware. Amen. Just across the line in Delaware. And uh, you know, because, uh, Amen. Uh, yeah. Amen. Amen. 
So let's praise God for the adoption. Amen. Doing the work there in uh, in Delaware, Amen. and uh, we just praise God for for them. I'm going to ask, and I've asked Bishop if he would share uh, just briefly with us today. Amen. And uh, of course, I'll be back next uh, next Sunday, brother. Amen. And uh, I'll be standing and proclaiming the Lord said the same. Uh, we're looking forward to watch night service. Amen. I'm going to ask, Amen. The members of Open Door would just meet us at Carter for a watch night service. Amen. So that we can all just Amen. worship together. Amen. And I was uh, we'll sold one year old. What's yeah. that? Yeah. Got saved on the Got that's right. Oh! Yeah. receive Bishop Coleman. He's going to come. Amen. And uh, he's going to share. Amen. In brief, of course, he's going to be coming back, but he's going to share a word with us. I am scheduled to be at another church. Amen. At 2 o'clock. I'm going to be leaving a little after 2, however. Amen. To be with Pastor Toller. Amen. Pastor Sean Toller. Amen. One of the sons. Um, Minister Carter. And of course, one of the pastors in our jurisdiction uh, has asked that I would come and share uh, briefly, amen, with his congregation. Just started a new church, and the Lord is blessing that ministry. And uh, has asked that the bishop would stop by, amen, this morning. And so I'm going to go there after we leave here. But I would that you would just extend your hands toward this preacher's head and say with me, God bless you, Bishop Coleman. Let's clap our hands and praise the Lord. to the jurisdiction of Paradise, Maryland Central, and to the, all the elders on the platform, to our wife, Lady Angela Coleman. Would you thank the Lord for her with you? <laughs> to Joseph St. Bishop of this jurisdiction, Bishop Carl Pierce. We thank the Lord for him. Amen. 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 And to Mother Diet, the Assistant State Supervisor, the Department. Let's thank the Lord for her. Come on, we can do better than that. Amen. We're grateful today. Real quickly, I'm going to go to 2 Samuel chapter 8. Amen. 2 Samuel chapter 8. When you have it, say amen. Amen. 2 Samuel chapter 8. And verse number 1. After this, the Bible said, David smote the Philistines and subdued them. And David took Methema out of the hands of the Philistines and subdued them. And after this, somebody needs an after this. Look at your neighbor and say, after this. Amen. Somebody needs an after this. So I'm just going to use for the few moments that I have granted to me by the jurisdiction of prelate. I want you to look at somebody and say, neighbor. Neighbor. Rick, get ready. Get ready. For your after this. For your after this. I don't know what may be going on today, but God knows what's going on in your life. Yes, he does. But God wants you to know that there is an after this in your future. My Lord. Prophetically declare to you that something good is coming after this. Your low place will come high. And your high place will come low. But something great is going to reflect in your life. Mother Supervisor, after this. You may have an issue in your life. You may have issues on your job. You may have issues in your family. But even with all the issues you're going through, there's still an after this. For I heard somebody say, what's coming is better than what has been. And the best is yet to come. The Bible says that David smote the Philistines and subdued them. And David took Methgama out of the hands of the Philistines and subdued them. But somebody 
needs to know that the giant and the Philistines in your life are only for a moment. Your situation, your condition, your illness, your infirmity, your problem is only for a moment. Tell somebody it's just for one moment. Now we have called it that weeping may endure for a night. And that joy comes in the morning. But God never declared to us when morning would come. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. We don't know how long night may be. We don't know how long your situation may last. But he said after the night is over. And when the sun rises in your situation. You can realize that there's something that's going to become a blessing to you after this. Somebody needs to know today that you're going through what you're going through. But what you're going through is not meant to kill you. It's not even meant to destroy you. It may break you. It may bruise you. But it won't break you. My wife has a women's ministry called Bruised Not Broken. And it may bruise you. You may have some scars, a few black and blue marks. But it won't break you. Because I heard the Lord say that he was with us at all times. That he would be our strength in the time of weakness. He said that, that my strength is made perfect in your weakness. And my grace is sufficient for thee. I want you to know that we have in our lives a reaching point. A point that God has allowed, has predestined for our life. But you can also hinder your after this. You can also hold up your after this. Bishop talked this morning about uh, possessing the land. Uh, but see, there's something about possessing the land that you must realize. In order to possess the land, he talked about the sanctifying of yourself. In order to possess the land, you must be in a right position to take the land. Because a lot of people have had land over the years. People have left them land, they have purchased land, they have purchased businesses, but they didn't know exactly what to do with it. They were not good standards, or good stewards rather, of what God had prospered them with. And if you don't do right with God has given you, God will surely take it away from you. Somebody would be grateful in order to possess the land. But you've got to realize that the Philistines have been subdued by David. We know that David went through with the Amalekites. They came in and invaded the south and burned Ziglag with fire. Stole everything that they had. Took their wives and their children captive. And left nothing unturned. David had to inquire of the Lord. And even in your weakness time, even in your problematic situation, you still got to go and talk to God. You still need to ask God, Lord, what is it that I need to do in this situation? David asked the Lord, shall I pursue them? And God gave him the green light and said, pursue them. And when he pursued them, the Bible said that David recovered all. He took back everything that the enemy took from them. I want us to stop saying, uh, I don't want what the devil stole. Yes, you do, because it wasn't his to start with. It was what God gave you to start with. And don't let the devil ever take from you what God has given you. And we want you to understand very briefly as I'm getting ready to get out of here. You're going to need some ministering in your life when you're going through your situation. When you're going through what Bishop Brooks calls a nadir experience. An experience of going through a problematic situation. Maybe it's sickness in your body. Maybe it's loneliness. Maybe it is something that you have never dealt with. We've been dealing with in our local church talking about strongholds. Strongholds come in many forms Not just smoking and drinking and drugs Not just sex But stronghold can be doubt Strongholds can be fear Strongholds can be unforgiveness And when you've got a stronghold Of unforgiveness or fear or doubt It will hinder your next level in God And so I want you to understand today That after this You need to be able To be able to say to your neighbor After this I'm still going to hold on. No matter what it is, I'm holding on because what's coming is better than what's been.
in and the best is yet to come. Bishop Toll teaches us all the time that he sees us in the future and we look much better than we look right now. You got to look at where God has taken you. Not where the devil has taken you, but where God is taking you and how God is blessing you. After this, you don't need to lose hope after this. You don't need to throw in the towel after this. You don't need to give up after this. You don't need to turn the switch off and say it's over after this. Tell somebody, my after this is beyond what I'm going through. It's beyond where I am, but it's where I'm going. This is not the end. It's just a temporary inconvenience. Sometimes we have temporary inconveniences. While waiting in traffic is a temporary inconvenience. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Waiting in the drive through at the bank is a temporary inconvenience. Waiting in long lines in the grocery store is a temporary inconvenience. Pains and aches in your body is nothing more than a temporary inconvenience. Hallelujah. Walking a little slower than you used to walk is just a temporary inconvenience. Not having the money that you desire to have today that you had yesterday can be a temporary inconvenience. This is not the end but it's just a temporary inconvenience. One thing about getting to the after this is that there is a hallway. And in that hallway, a hallway is between two different places. It's began where you go into the hallway to where you're going in the hallway. It can be one door down. It can be one, uh, it can be one whole floor to the other end. But it's only... A hallway. The hallway takes you to where you're going. You can't get to the next level in God until you first go through the hallway. You got to go through what you're going through to get to the hallway. No matter how long the hallway is, you got to go through the hallway. You got to go through the hallway of disappointment. You may have to go through the hallway of fear. You may have to go through the hallway of lack. But in the year 2020, the hallway should start getting shorter for you. Your walk ought to get shorter for you. The distance ought to get shorter for you. From one hallway to the next. Your one level to the next level. This is not the end yet. It's only a hallway. This is the between place. Between where I came from. Between where I am. And between where I'm going. You see, we used to pray all the time, Lord, thank you for where you brought me from. Thank you for where I am right now, and thank you for where you're taking me. Hallelujah. It's only an in-between place. We're not done here. It doesn't stop here. Your healing doesn't stop here. Your deliverance doesn't stop here. Your breakthrough doesn't stop here. Your salvation doesn't stop here. It's a hallway and is leading you to the next level in God. This is just a valley between two mountains. Yes, the Bible said, and yea, though I walk through the valley, it says shadows of death. Well, it may not be literal death, maybe financial death, maybe physical ailment death, but whatever your ailment is, it's only two mountains, two hills, and a valley between the hills. Because when we get through the hill, he also told us to look to the hill. For what's coming to our help, our help come from the Lord. Say yes. Sometimes this place may be called meanwhile. And you might in me man between checks meanwhile. Meanwhile, why I don't feel too good. Meanwhile, why my money's funny. Meanwhile, why my change is strange. Meanwhile, I got aches in my body. Meanwhile, when the devil is attacking me, it's only a meanwhile and in between while. But there comes a day. Fire from heaven, and after his servant seen the little cloud, the 
Bible said, and it came to pass in the meanwhile that the heaven was black with clouds and the wind and the rain was great and the great rain came say yes after the meanwhile the great blessing came after the meanwhile in the meanwhile there was dark clouds and wind for somebody today you know exactly what I'm talking about because you're in your meanwhile you're in your right now but your right now is not your ladder for your ladder shall be greater than the father says yes the harsh winds of adversity are blowing in your life and the dark clouds are obscuring the sun but I heard I said I heard that in your meanwhile you're in a place of testing of waiting
Safeway, we stand and we look up at that fire truck. A truck and all of it. Amen. Had a ladder and all of it. Amen. Enough toys in that one package for two right. fellas to have a good time. Every time we went to Safeway, we look up there. Amen. Christmas was getting close and that truck was still up there. <laughs> <laughs> this is as true as I'm standing here before you. This is a true story. We went to Safeway one evening and we looked up and that truck was gone. Amen. I've been to Sanctified Church all my life. I don't know no other church other than the Sanctified Church. Amen. It's okay. Nobody fault me for dancing. I've been dancing all my life. Amen. Amen. My brother looked up there and he said, It's gone. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's by faith. I'll never forget. This is as true as I'm real. Shelly's uh, Shelly standing here telling you this. And I'm going to shut up. Amen. Stop, Stop, the saints were having church on a Sunday night. Uh -huh. Amen. And I got the key to Amy's car. And I went and opened up the truck before Christmas. And the fire truck was in the truck. I closed the truck and I got saved that night. I got on the altar and I had Christmas hadn't come. But I had confident expectation based upon it. Confident expectation. Amen. Amen. I just got a glimpse. I hadn't put my hand on it. Amen. Amen. Put your baby tell her, just hang on in, man. Is on the way. When, I opened, when we opened up that package, because Christmas Day it said to Carl and Marcus. Amen. We didn't mind sharing that because we had claimed it together. Amen. Y'all don't hear me what I say. Lepers, amen. They knew how to get what they needed from the Lord. They put their prayers together. They said, Lord, have mercy on us, all of us. Thank you, preacher. Come on, let's praise God for the preacher. 
God, in Jesus' name, we bless you and we praise you. We thank you for your goodness, your mercy, and your love. Thank you for Bishop Coleman, his lovely wife, and those that have come to worship on today. Pray to God that the word that is gone from his lips has found a lodging place in the hearts of your people. Pray that you would fill every void. Occupy every space made available to you in the hearts of these your people. Meet your people at the point of their need. Bring every high place down. Make every crooked path straight. Let the glory of the Lord be revealed in the lives of your little ones. We give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor. Eyes have not seen. Ears have not heard. That has entered into the hearts of men the great things that you have prepared and stored. Ah, and in readiness for those that love you and call those that call you Lord. So we give you praise, we give you honor, we give you glory for it, and we tell you thank you. Come on, tell the Lord thank you. And we praise you for it in Jesus' name. Everybody say thank God. Amen. Clap your hands and give the Lord praise. Bless you, the Lord keep you. Let's the of the Lord and prepare the wish of the Lord in the giving. Amen. I'm going to ask that the officers would come. God bless you. Thank you Bishop Coleman, thank you so much for that word. That word on today. Bless the name of the Lord as we worship the Lord in giving. Amen. I trust that each of you had a wonderful Christmas. Amen. Amen. Everybody have a good Christmas. Amen. Who in here didn't get a gift for Christmas? Anybody didn't get a gift for Christmas? Amen. All right, your name. I'm going to pull you down here on the altar. <laughs> you didn't get a gift for Christmas? All right, you get one today. Amen. Pastor's going to give you a Christmas gift. Amen. Amen. Well, I thought I would. <laughs> Pick, 